Hey, so we're doing the Mayan Popol Vuh and Mayan Holy Text. Now this is the defeat and death of Zipacna, when he was beaten by the two boys, Juanapu and Zipalanque. What now weighed heavily on the hearts of the two boys was that the 400 boys had been killed by Zipacna. It's mere fish and crabs that Zipacna looks for in the waters, but he's eating every day, going around looking for his food by day and lifting up mountains by night. Next comes the counterfeiting of a great crab by Juanapu and Zibalanque. And they used bromeliad flowers, picking the, from the bromeliads of the forest. They became the forearms of the crab, and where they opened were the claws. They used a flagstone for the back of the crab, which clattered. After that, they put the shell beneath an overhang at the foot of a great mountain. Meoan is the name of the mountain where the defeat took place. After that, when the boys came along, they found Zipakna by the water. Where are you going, boy? Zipakna asked. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just looking for m my food. Boys, Zipakna replied. What's your food? Just fish and crabs, but there aren't any that I can find. It's been two days since I stopped getting meals. By now, I can't stand the hunger. Zipakna told Huanapu and Zipalanke. There is the, that crab down in the canyon, a really big crab. Perhaps you might manage to eat her. We're just getting bitten. We wanted to catch her, but we got scared by her. If she hasn't gone away, you could catch her, said Huanapu and Zipalanke. Take pity on me. Please come point her out, boys, said Zipakna. We don't want to, but you go ahead. You can't miss her. Just follow the river, and you go straight on over there, below a great mountain. She's clattering there at the bottom of the canyon. Just head on over there, said Juanapu and Zipalanque. But won't you please take pity on me? W what if she can't be found, boys? If you come along, I'll show you a place where there are plenty of birds. Please, come shoot them. I know where they are, Zipakna replied. They consented. He went ahead of the boys. What if you can't catch the crab, just as we had to turn back? So will you. Not only didn't we eat her, but all at once she was biting us. We were entering face down, but when she got scared, we were entering on our back. We just barely missed reaching her then, so you'd better enter on your back, he was told. Very well, Zipakna replied, and then they went on. Now Zipakna had company as he went. They arrived at the bottom of the canyon. The crab is on her side. Her shell is gleaming red there. In under the canyon wall is their contrivance. Very good. <clears throat> Zipakna is happy now. He wishes she were already in his mouth, so she could really cure his hunger. He wanted to eat her. He just wanted it face down. He wanted to enter, but since the crab got on top of him and with her back down, he came back out. You didn't reach her? He was asked. No, indeed. She was just getting on top with her back down. I just barely missed her on the first try, so perhaps I'd better enter on my back, he replied. After that, he entered again on his back. He entered all the way. Only his kneecaps were showing now. He gave a last sigh and was calm. The great mountain rested on his chest. He couldn't turn over now, and so Zipakna turned to stone. Such, in its turn, was the defeat of Zipakna by the two boys. Juanapu and Zibalanque. He was the maker of mountains, as his previous pronouncements had it, the first son of seven Macaw. He was defeated beneath the great mountain called Meoan, defeated by genius alone. He was the second to magnify himself, and now we shall speak of, of another. So, these two boys, right, they trick him into shimmying into this underpass because there's a big juicy crab there, and Zipakna eats crab and you know shellfish and he's like I'm hungry ain't no fish ain't no crab let me go into this cave that these two boys tell me to go to and it's unclear if there's like a, a uh, my, like a force or something that causes the mountain to like get him stuck or he gets stuck himself that transforms him into stone but either way he's on his back right trying to get in and because remember before he entered in on his belly and he, you know, that didn't work. This, the way the underpass was, he couldn't really maneuver it. So he had to go in on his back. And he got stuck and turned to stone. <laughs> All 
all the efforts to grab me, man. I don't know. Maybe somebody could trick me, right? Be like, man, I want some nice butter, some nice garlic. Mmm. You telling me there's a fat, juicy crab in a cave? I just gotta go down there and get it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Day. So they tricked him, but they tricked him, you know, because he was hungry and he fell for it because he was hungry, right? Maybe he would have been like, man, if I've eaten, you can't really trick me. So. Indeed, it was genius, but if Zipakna had eaten, I don't think the two boys could have tricked him, right? It's because he was hungry, if you really think about it, that he was, you know, tricked in the first place. <laughs> what a funny story. <laughs>